from the highest highway in Canada, Highwood Pass. Welcome to the GCN Show. Love you, Simon. Love you, Dan. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, band or not banned. Play along at home, see if you can work out who the UCI will disqualify next. We've also got a lowdown on the British Prime Minister's new bike, given to him by the President of the USA, and it's got rim brakes. More problems with the global bike shortage and a premium dangle mug. Oh yeah. This week, in the world of cycling, we learnt that Mark Cavendish took his biggest win for the last three hellish seasons when he dispatched a who's who of the world's best sprinters at the final stage of the Tour of Belgium. Strangely though, it didn't really seem like it meant very much to him. No, it was a very subdued celebration. <laughs> oh. Oh. Congrats, Mark. Will he get to ride the Tour de France this year? That's the question, and the odds are getting Shorter, I'd say. They are, indeed, yeah. Uh, we also learned what it takes to win the Unbound Gravel Race. Ian Boswell posted his power output from the race to Strava, showing that an average of just 247 watts is needed, but for 10 hours. Yes, a proper grind. Now, the average power is remarkably consistent throughout, just with a 1,000 watt kick to win the final sprint. Nice. We also learned off the back of that data uh, just what Dan uh, has to do to win it. So uh, take your current 30 minute max power and do it for 20 times longer. <laughs> Job done. I think I'd cramp after the first of those 10 hours, if I'm <laughs> yeah. honest. First of the 20 hours, in your case, actually. Very true, I can't argue with that. Either way, I wouldn't feel too bad because it happens to the best of them. Here's Victor Campenarts at the Tour of Belgium. Campenarts, yeah, well you can't uh, trademark that, it's been done online by Thomas Degent and Benji Narsen. Yeah, well, anyway, he shows that even top pros can succumb to cramp. Ouch. And finally, we also learned that the UCI have taken banning to another level. At that very same race, Jan Willem van Schip was disqualified after stage three, not by the commissaires who were there at the race, but by people at the UCI headquarters in Switzerland after the stage had finished. Yeah, I think with behaviour like that, Dan, it's no longer a headquarters of the UCI. It's like an evil lair. I can just imagine someone watching all the live racing on GCN Plus, because you would, wouldn't you? Um, just with a giant bank of TV screens, stroking a cat, firing out WhatsApps to communicate who is going to be disqualified or fined today. Yeah. Please issue Van Ship with a one billion dollar fine. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. We can only go up to 200 Swiss francs on this occasion. Yes. We can disqualify him, though. OK, let's do that, and I'll take the 200 Swiss francs. Uh, it does make you wonder, though, doesn't it? So apparently Van Ship had explicit permission, as we said, from the UCI in the morning of the race to be able to use the bars. He just found out later that he'd been DQ'd by somebody else entirely. Yeah, it's super, super harsh, isn't it? Not just, ah, actually, we changed our minds, could you please take those handlebars off for tomorrow's stage, but go home yeah. and have a good long think about it. And don't come back until you have. Yeah. I think this kind of thing might actually be unprecedented. Yeah. That is to say, remote disqualification from Dr. Evil in Egg. But the UCI have hit back and listed reasons why actually it shouldn't have come as a surprise to Van Schip or his team in the first place, most notably because resting your forearms on the bike is not allowed. Yeah, so, duh. And honestly, when you look at those bars, I'd have thrown him off the race too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, not for resting his forearms on the handlebars, but just for generally bringing cycling into disrepute. Because there is a point at which being aero crosses the line and that is definitely it. Uh, enormous aero socks is another one that crosses the line. Those POC TT helmets, that's another one. And any triathlon TT bike. <laughs> well, on that note, though, maybe there should be a minimum sock height and not a maximum one like they've got at the moment. Uh, something for the UCI to work on, I guess. But in all seriousness, whilst the UCI do receive a lot of criticism for their rules and the application of them, without them and without their rules, we'd have a sport that looks unrecognisable compared to what we see today, wouldn't we? True, whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing is up to debate, but personally, I think it's a good thing. Without rules and equipment, everyone would be riding the flatter sprint stages on recumbents with fairings. To be fair, I'd probably pay to watch Caleb Ewan, and Tim Malir, Sam Bennett, Cavendish and Viviani sprinting on recumbents. That would be entertainment personified, wouldn't it? It would. It would be fantastic uh, for the sheer novelty of it. <laughs> um, but then I just don't think we'd want to watch that on repeat, would we? No. 
Um, um, one off. And also, without the UCI rules, the differential between the teams with the biggest budgets to the smallest budgets would be even bigger, wouldn't it? I mean, you could imagine what type of superbike Ineos Grenadiers would have developed if it could be as light and as aero as they wanted without any restrictive regulations mm. in place. I can almost imagine what sort of bike they would have developed by now. Uh, but I do take your point. It would mean the most talented riders, who are therefore the most expensive, would not only have the most talent, they have the fastest and the lightest bikes compared to others too. Anyway, back to the original subject, the banning on those Speedco aero bars and the disqualification of Jan Willem van Schip. Now you said, so, duh. I did, yeah. In reaction to me. But actually, even with standard bars, if you get aero whilst you're on the hoods, you invariably rest some of your arms on the bars, don't you? Well, that is true. And that would be strictly against the UCI rules, which state using the forearms as a point of support on the handlebar is prohibited, except in time trials. Exactly. So off the back of that, I've come up with a genius game. Banned or not banned. I'll show you a photo side and you uh, should be decide whether it should be banned or not. All right. uh, and please play along at home because it's entertainment <laughs> at its very best. Right, are you ready? Yeah. Case study number one, Tour of Flanders this year, Casper Asgrey. Oh. Well, hang on a minute. Uh, banned. I don't think his arms are resting on the bars. No. Anyway, it's your game. Well, it's my game strictly, but I'll let you play along. All right. Uh, number two. Matej Mohoric of Bahrain Victorious. Not banned, clearly, are they? No, you can see a gap, can't you, between his yeah. forearm and the bar there. Lucky escape for Matej there. Uh, this should be an easy one, because he's actually got his hands on the tops. Andrea Taffy. Not banned, clearly. <laughs> no, but very aero, very considering aero. he's on the tops and, and going up hill, isn't he? Riding up a really steep hill, yeah. Mm. Number four is also Andrea Taffy. Ooh. Well, banned. Yeah, I think so. They've got to go back and ban him. Yeah. Well, actually, no, he's all right, because that was before April. About yeah, it wasn't ago, banned wasn't it? at the time. Yeah. All right, slightly more recent then, Fabian Cancellara. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly banned. Look at that. Four Look at arms. His, his seed. Yeah, his frontal area is very much smaller than everybody else around it. There, it isn't is. It? Yeah. I suspect he'd go slower in that position. <laughs> though. Uh, number six, unknown rider. Yeah, who is that? Looks good. It looks like they're about to go back to the laughing group. <laughs> uh, I'd say, I'd say not banned from that one. Would you? Mm. Well, what about this one? Also unnamed rider. Banned. Definitely banned. Yeah. Yeah. For the for the arms on the bars or? Just generally. But no, the arms on <laughs> the bars. I, I take your point. If the UCI rule states no arms on the bars, then they are gonna have to closely govern whether a rider's arms meet the bars when they're on the hoods. And a lot of us, it's true, right? Yeah, but this is where things start to get very complicated, Si, because in their own paraphernalia uh, from the UCI, in what is allowed and what isn't, uh, what is is this. Nicky Turpshire and Matt Stevens and Jason Kitt with his arms clearly on the bars. <laughs> Oh, we're going to have to have a debate about what constitutes an arm and what constitutes a wrist, aren't we? We are not, because even for us, that would be very boring. I, mean, so I instead, did research about this. What about the arm? <laughs> no, your instead, forearm? we're going to ask you at home the thoughts that you've got on those speed code bars. Should they be banned or allowed? Let us know in the comments below and by taking the poll that's over on the GCN app, a link to which should be on screen now. It is time now for your weekly GCN inspiration. Once again, we've chosen our favourite three photos from the last week over on the GCN app that you've been uploading, and each of those will receive a prize. So, first up this week. First up this week, winning an ass saver with a target design. Called a target ass saver. <laughs> I looked at that. That's, yeah, it looks a bit weird there, doesn't it? Anyway, Yoga77, congratulations to you. What a cracking photo. Um, they've said, COVID pandemic resulted in working remotely slash from home. So together with my friend, we decided to relocate to Spain for a month, bringing our bikes with us. Which is kind of ironic, isn't it? If you're not allowed to go into work, but you are allowed to go and live in Spain. Um, <laughs> but anyway. Maybe we should look into this, side. Si. Well, that's a good point, yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah. to be fair, we could do the GCN show from Spain each week anyway. This is a great idea, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I like, like this and everything, but mm. anyway. This, this, this photo looks slightly better though, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? Yeah. We can't go anywhere anyway though, in the UK right now. That is inspiring me to relocate and work in a different place remotely. Uh, yeah, brilliant photo. Uh, in second place, winning a G-SIN Black Core sweatshirt is Cy.Woodhams. Um, Congratulations, Cy. Took this Cy. shot during the descent 
of Stoland Dam uh, when I was joined by another holiday rider along the route. We'd never met before, never planned to ride together until we pulled alongside one another. Uh, this is what cycling is about, bringing people together and just happening to get shots like this one along the way. Yeah, not only did you meet a fellow cyclist, but you also met a fellow cyclist with a penchant for posing for nice photographs. Look at that. I wonder how they're going to split this prize, though, because they've only got one core cool sweatshirt between them. Ooh, that might put an end to the holiday romance. Mm. Right, right. You're lucky not to come across a wheel sucker, really. That's what you normally get, isn't it? It's true, that. Yeah. Anyway, that is a lovely photo, isn't it? Very nice. Uh, right, the winner this week winning a GTN Core Black hoodie plus a Shadow Stand original and a Core Black t shirt is Dorin Mantoy. Is it Dorin Mant Mantoy? Yeah, Mantoy. I don't know. Sorry, Dorian. Anyway, there we go. Almost all Alpine passes are open. The Alpine Challenge lens hide, long route, 191 Ks. Um, Uncancelled race is difficult to plan around, hence I had to do the route the day before the actual race, but that gave me the chance to stop and take photographs like this one. My word. Yeah. That, that, that looks like a painting. Yeah. If we're going to relocate, Dan, what? I mean, we could do worse well, than we that. Could, we could do a month in Spain and a month in Switzerland. Yeah. A month on the cobbles later on in the year if we're feeling robust enough. <laughs> but yeah, that is an absolutely cracking photo. Yeah, that's goodness. amazing, isn't it? I kind of forgot that places like that exist. Well, I realised when I switched on GCN Plus at the weekend to watch the Tour de Swiss because, my goodness, there was also some unbelievable scenery over the last few days of that. Yeah. Anyway, back on topic, uh, your chance to win next week starts now, basically. Get uploading your photos over to the GCN app. We'll pick three more out next week. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we will start with the full lowdown on the custom-built bike commissioned by President Biden for the British Prime Minister. Yeah, a Boris bike you'd actually want to ride, shall yeah. we say. Uh, take a look at it. Fantastic, yeah. isn't it? It's made by Belenki Cycle Works, based in Philadelphia, and we got the lowdown from Stephen Belenki himself. Yeah, so apparently the style and colour spec came from the State Department, so someone there clearly knows their bikes, I think you'd have to say. Belenki then ran with it, saying it was clear in his mind that it couldn't be stodgy or mundane, but a lightweight, sprite-handling bike with classic lines and heirloom quality, so quite unlike the Prime Minister that it was intended for. Ooh, oh, like we are going to have some comments of the week next week. Nah, my we'll be fine. goodness. Anyway, stable handling, longer chainstay to allow you to fit a pannier rack on there for important state documents. Uh, fillet braids, which require Belenki working 14 hours a day, should I say, uh, to keep the insanely short lead time. Yeah, now what I thought was really cool uh, is that Belenki said that he used to lust after classic British lightweights. Not like Dan, uh, but 70s bikes, like a Jack Taylor. So building this, he said, was like bringing his career full circle. And it was then built up with US components, including SRAM ETAP access, but shock horror, rim brakes. Whoa. Yeah. Anyway, staying with tech, Boris Johnson could have reciprocated the cycling themed gift for President Biden, himself a keen rider, we hear. Yeah, hello, Mr. President, if you're watching. Oh, yeah. Hi, Joe. Uh, we're suffering from Rafa's latest releases. I'm thinking the titanium dangle mug or the hip flask. Yeah, I'll be honest, we probably couldn't stretch uh, the UK taxpayer the budget quite that far for a titanium dangle mug. Um, they are premium products, we say. But quick heads up though, if you haven't seen it, Rafa have dived into mountain bike clothing, which is very cool. Nice looking kit it is too. I fancy the bum bag. Yeah, I did have one in 1996 and I've been regretting getting rid of it for the last six months. Well, or so. it is all about keeping hold of what you've got at the moment, mm. isn't it? In the latest blow to the great global bike shortage, one of Shimano's factories over in Malaysia has had to be temporarily shut due to a nationwide COVID mandate. Now, it's mainly entry level components, but not ideal news when so many people are starting to get into the sport. No, but the value of our 11 speed Campagnolo cassette collection continues to rise. By the day. We'll be able to retire in about a year's time, well, I reckon. Or we could have a charity auction. We could do. Yeah. Yeah. Or we Let could retire. Know. Let us know how much you'd spend on a Campagnolo 11 to 23 11 speed cassette. Yeah. There's only four in existence. We've got them all. Yeah. Right. In yet more tech news, a Kickstarter campaign has been ended prematurely after it seems like the cycling world was not quite ready for a cycling kit that required you to prove how fast you can ride in order to be able to buy it. I definitely wasn't. 
Uh, anyway, Go Faster have gone back to the drawing board on that one after the cycling community kicked off about it for not being very inclusive. No. Fair enough. Uh, the idea beyond working towards the goal of being able to buy a certain jersey could be a good one, but the reality, not quite as much. No, not really. And to be fair, that kind of jersey exists already. It's called the World Champs jersey, isn't it? Yeah, Very elite. Good point. Yeah. And uh, now some racing news, and one of the US's biggest domestic races happened at the weekend. The Tulsa Tough being a three-day cycling festival in Oklahoma, with a series of elite crit races being the highlight. And it was a complete show of force for the Legion of LA team, who won literally everything, and often with other pri prizes, other riders on the podium places too. Yeah, it was phenomenal, wasn't yeah. it? And the team owner and winner of the opening night's race, Justin Williams, dedicated the victories to the Black Wall Street Massacre, which is the worst instance of racial violence in American history after white mobs attacked black residents and destroyed black-owned businesses of the Greenwood district of Tulsa a hundred years ago this very month. Yeah. I didn't know about that. No, I didn't know about that. Unbelievable. Uh, right, uh, we'll finish cycling shorts with a huge congratulations to Marion Rous and Julien Alaphilippe on the birth of their first baby, Nino. Alaphilippe flew home early, didn't he, from the Tour de Suisse before the last stage of the race to be at the birth. And I'm pretty sure there's not a single part of them that would have any regrets about that decision. So congratulations to both of you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right then, a quick shop update. Um, Perfect timing for this uh, summery weather. Uh, GCN Castelli uh, Pro Team range has just got bigger. We've got men's and women's Castelli Perfetto Ross vests and a women's Gabba jacket uh, and Aero race gloves as well. Yeah. So uh, there we go. There are quite a few additions to the GCN shop at the moment actually, aren't there? So if you'd like to take a look, please head over there. I'll put a link in the description below and possibly on the screen now. That's not our job, so hopefully it'll be there. Yeah. Hack forward slash bodge of the week now, starting with this from Thixon. When fuel is life, uh, sometimes a cycling jersey's pockets just won't cut it. Solution, strap an icebox to your back like this hungry and genius local rider in Bangkok's Old Town. Wow, that's, a, that's not an icebox, that's a fridge, surely. It's a big fridge at that. Yeah. And it looks very close to the rear wheel. Yeah. You know, um, when you're delivering stuff by bike, not really, but... Sure. Well, when... No, you know, because you've done it. We did it for a video. Oh, I did, yeah. I got yeah, stuck in a revolving door, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Amateur. <laughs> you did, yeah. No wonder you've blocked that from your memory. <laughs> <laughs> With something similar on my back to that, actually. Yeah, but you've got to be careful about how aero you get. Because often the toppings from your pizza can slide off if you lean too far forward. I have this problem. Oh, uh, well, no, I just put them on a different part of my back so that when I was fully aero, which I wasn't really because of a big square box on my back. Well, uh, yeah, but the, the delivery riders now, they're obviously not watching that film because often I, my pizza turns up and it's all slid yeah. off. This one well, looks the, like it might be all right. The but... problem with it was I had to walk to the door like that as well, which looked a bit strange. <laughs> the door that you then got stuck in. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'd say that's a hack, wouldn't you? Uh, I'm... Yeah, go on then. Yeah, I'll say hack as well. Yeah. Um, oh, we haven't got the results. No, oh, no. Let's guess that 99% of the people said a hack Without for that doubt. one. So yeah. we're definitely in the majority on yeah. there. Uh, right, next up, this from uh, Zim Blake, who is actually uh, Blake from GMBN. Isn't My he? word. Um, Octane 2 side back. Always wanted to build a side hack, and I finally got to. Say hello to my side hack or bodge. That is the question. Wow. I think that's a pretty cracking effort. He made that himself, has he? Yeah, he did, yeah. There's a video about it on GMBN. Oh, is there? Yeah. I must catch up with that. You must. Uh, uh, hack from me. Well, I do see Blake around the office, so I'm going to say hack as well. Yeah, good shout. He's, he's quite big, isn't he? Well, muscled. But probably doesn't watch the G's in show, so I'm going to say bodge, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say the text. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah, no, I think hack. hack. You say bodge. Hack. 81% of you. So it hack. does generally look quite cool, that does. It, it looks very cool, doesn't it? Yeah. Not that I would stand on it with him riding. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Uh, right, next up, we've got this one from One Slow Americano. Great name, by the way. Um, bike rack internal. Uh, we needed a way to haul our bikes while simultaneously pulling our Airstream trailer. The cap on the truck will keep them out of the weather, too. Uh, my assistant is a huge help. Thank you very much, wow. assistant. But that's neat, isn't it? Very neat, yes. Uh, I like that. I think there's only one way I can vote on that, and that is hack. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's good that you've got a trailer as well, because I don't know about you, but when I drive anywhere, there's always so much stuff already in the boot or trunk of my car 
that I couldn't stand like bikes up like that. What have you got? What What do you mean? In the boot. Oh, it's stuff. Especially if you're going around on holiday. It's just rammed full of things, Yeah, isn't it? true. I mean, even like I like to think that I pack light. The fact is, if you've got to take normal clothes and then you think of cycling stuff, because you need to, you know, you always need your overshoes, just mm -hmm. in case, and every item of clothing. <laughs> yes, so yeah, but there's no, there's no room for anything else. Yeah. The kids are lucky to get in as well these I days. understand your pain, so mm. we can move on. I'm sorry. Uh, to this one from Scott Bolton. Uh, who needs expensive tools? My replacement bottom bracket arrived today, but the tools were delayed, so I may do with the pointy end of an old rusty file and a two pound lump hammer, resting the frame on a couple of logs. Seem to do the job. Hack. <laughs> look at the look at the devastation that you've wreaked. Obviously, that, that's your old bomb bracket, but still, oh my word! Um, if that bot, if your new bomb bracket revolves, then fair play, um, you've dodged a bullet there, I think, Scott. But um, yeah, I'm going to go with Bodge for that one. I think I'm going to go with Bodge too, 100%. Um, also, we didn't re read out the results in the previous one, which was 92% of hack, and I think we we're all in agreement with that. This one, yeah, 83% of people going with bodge yeah i think that's you know that's a pretty solid bodge there uh right next up we've got this one from now is that o'neill wolf or one il wolfe i think o'neill wolf i would go with on that all one. right uh anyway now this one to pique my interest have you ever had it when your bottle cage bolts come loose in the rivets so no matter how much you tighten them up your bottle cage still rattles not that i remember ah it's happened to me several occasions anyway you can get them fixed if you take them to a frame repair shop, but here we go, he's, uh, he's done it himself. So, um, so yeah, using a 6mm rib nut to replace the 5mm rib nut. It's not a sexy hack or bodge, but it is a good one. Um, and then he says, uh, the cable ties were removed, so I'll be proud, as he doesn't like them. Um, no, I don't. So, uh, yeah, well done. Yeah, what are you saying then? Hack? Uh, I'm going to say hack, yeah. 100%. I'll go hack as well. Yeah, there we go then. 86% uh, of you lot said that was a hack as well, undoubtedly, because we he removed the zip ties. Speaking of which, Dan, mm. can I just draw your attention, right? So I got a message on Instagram yeah. from, from someone from Austria called Tamara, um, and she sent me this link. Look at that. A zip tie jewellery. Literally a ring, a gold ring in the shape of a zip tie. Yeah. I just, I mean, and well, I'm boggled. Did you say to your wife, don't worry, I will never get you zip tie jewellery, but if some 3D printed jewellery comes up, I'll buy it for you. You can even get a zip tie bangle bracelet. Can you? So there's like a massive dangly pointy bit that like could do yourself a nasty. I mean, honestly, if you're I wearing a ring, where's off. it going to go? Mm. It's like an actual thing. It costs yeah. 350 euros. I think hacks and bodges have gone on far too long at this point. So. so we'll wrap it up, encourage people to get involved, ready for next week's show over on the GCN app. And uh, one day we won't whittle on as much. Okay, next up, it's time for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. All you gotta do is put a witty caption in the comment section down below that we then select as our winner. However, results first. Yes, this was last week's photo uh, from the Criterion du Dauphiné, and the winner is the Tinkering Cyclist. Caption, what happens when you eat tin foil? You sheet metal. Brilliant. That is good. That goes in the pantheon of all-time great captions, I think. We need to give the tinkering cyclist a job, I think. Well, we can have a water bottle. Although he will raise the standards to a point that people won't even know it's GCN. Good I point, think, that. We, uh, sh we should have actually kept a, like a bit of a leaderboard of pantheon of all-time greatest captions. We should have done, yes. Where would I be? Don't know. Well, how many, minute, how many have we I... had now? Probably 400? <laughs> uh, this week's one comes from the start of a stage of the Tour of Belgium. Mm. I will start you off. Caleb Ewan and Remco Evenepoel failed to find loopholes in UCI position rules. Yeah, yeah. I can see why you've gone with that. Thank you. Um, where do I sit? In the uh, pantheon of caption. Towards the bottom end, I'd say, with that Still one. But, with that. Um, no, too fair. No, it's quite funny, actually, isn't it? I see what you've gone for. Yep. Um, uh, yeah. Related to our story at the beginning. As well. Anyway, oh, yeah, see what he did. Yeah. You, yeah, topical. Already, yeah, related. If you can do better, uh, which wouldn't be too hard, obviously, as ever, uh, you can leave your captions in the comment section down below and we look forward to reading them. Coming up on the channel, before that, 
Comment of the last week underneath the videos that we've put up over the last seven days. Starting with this one underneath last week's GCN show, uh, poorly made memes put, fun fact, GCN Rate My Plumbing is also the official name of their coverage for the annual Naked Bike Ride. <laughs> Not sure we've got the rights for the World Naked Bike Ride, have we? We can't show that one on GCN, uh, GCN no, Race Pass. No, not live, we might have short highlights. <laughs> yeah. um, sticking with last week's show, actually, lots of comments about our, uh, our main story about whether cycling is getting more expensive. It would appear that 99% of you feel that it is getting more expensive. Mm. So, uh, fairly overwhelming uh, response there. Um, I'm inclined to still disagree with you a little bit, but go on, I see where you've gone with it. Uh, right then. You. What's that? I agree with them. Do you? Yeah, you're right. I don't like getting negative comments. <laughs> Right then, next up from Rody versus Fixie. This is where Hank took on Alec Briggs. Thomas Watch Reviews. I wonder what his channel does. Um, super impressive camera work and editing. Right up there with the level of the old Top Gear. There's wow. A, there's a good praise. That is a compliment. Thank you very much, it? Thomas Watch Reviews. Uh, and we got the Jays wrote, when you, fix, uh, when you ride a fixed gear, you don't optimise for marginal gains. Instead, you optimise for the fun and enjoyment of your bike. Well, yeah, I see that, and Alec uh, did a pretty good job of, uh, of selling that as well. Um, except when you have to get up a hill or stop, and then it's just a pain in the ass, isn't yeah. it? Also, what we cycle for is for the pain and being angry and quite sad about life, really, isn't it? Yeah, that is true. Uh, uh, Underneath clipless versus flat pedals, Mardi Hussein wrote in saying, at 4 minutes 50, that transition was perfect. And it was. Let's have a look at it again. Next up, Hankston. Here he is. Good luck. Ooh. Very yeah. smooth. And the speed with which Manon went from clipless pedals to flats. Remarkable. Very good. So, yeah. uh, meanwhile, under gravel bike versus road bike, August Bashar said, I could barely hear Alex and Sai over Sai's shoes. <laughs> <laughs> they are <laughs> quite, quite loud. loud. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Those are, my, uh, those are my shoes for wet days, right? So I've got white shoes for dry days, orange shoes for wet days, and I thought it was going to be a wet day, but it turned out the sun came out. So. We were filming the other day, Simon, weren't we? and I left my trainers, the only pair I had with me, at a cafe whilst filming and didn't realise until opening hours had ended. So I had to go into a pub in casual clothing and my DMT cycling shoes. And unfortunately it wasn't carpeted, so you could hear me coming from a long way off. There were a lot of stairs and it was very embarrassing, but I still got a couple of pints in. You did, mate, yeah. Uh, anyway, what's coming up on the channel over the next seven days? On Wednesday, 11 cool Strava features you'll wish you'd known about. There are a lot more features by the month, aren't there? Oh Strava? my word. So I thought I knew Strava pretty well, and um, we worked with Strava to bring this video, and oh my word. I say like, no, that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Really? So yeah, Fine. watch that one. Uh, on Thursday, you'll be able to watch the GCN Tech Show. On Friday, how to survive the dreaded bonk. Yep, does what it says on the tin, that one. Uh, on Saturday, we found ourselves a racing tandem. So, one rider versus an aero tandem. Who's gonna win? I can't wait to see that one. And also on GCN Training, don't forget, should you train your upper body? Well, it depends what your upper body's like. We've got no need to, really. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, where are you at with your well, press-ups? Oh, mate, I'm killing it. Are you? Yeah, yeah, well, my target when I set off, when I started, was to be able to do sets of 20. Yeah. I can do sets of 20 now. Can you? I can rattle out three sets of 20. That's, That's why I'm looking so buff. From the three that you, not three sets, just three you started. The three press-ups, yeah, it is, Not yeah. that long ago. Yeah. Well done. Thanks, mate. Uh, on Monday, it will be the racing news show over on the GSN Racing Channel. And talking of racing, it's less than two weeks now until the start of the Tour de France. In fact, it's only 11 days away, I think, as this show comes out. Uh, so that is definitely one to watch. It Ineos starts two weeks early, versus it, Pugac year? Yeah, one week early, yeah. Ineos versus Pogaccia versus Roglic on that one. But there is racing before the Tour starts. So this week, uh, the Adriatica Ionica race is on. I think that's three days long. And we've also got the French and the uh, Spanish National Championships. I don't know why I want to say Italian all the time. French and Spanish National Championships. Uh, the French have got the time trial and the Roglic road races and for the Spanish just the road races uh, but some more racing to feast your eyes on and then it's all eyes set on the tour we'll have our big preview coming out early next week Good day, isn't it? Uh, right there's more content of course there is GCN plus documentary has got two bangers for you this week on Tuesday we've got checkpoint which is basically what happens when you put the women's round the world record holder and the men's round the world record holder together 
and set them off on various different challenges around Scotland. Uh, it's brilliant, definitely worth a watch that one. And then on Friday, I seem to remind myself, ah yes, reinventing the wheel. Connor, at six foot eight, is the world's former tallest professional cyclist, uh, has been underserved with uh, bike sizes. So he's gone and got a custom bike, but not with 700C wheels. So you definitely need to check that oh, out. Oh, it's great. I mean, he it looks completely normal underneath Connor, with Hank stood next to it with his head near the bus. <laughs> it looks very funny. Uh, yeah, honestly, you do need to check that one out. It's a brilliant, brilliant video. Mm. Right, I think that brings an end to this week's GCN show. Again, many congratulations if you got through to this point. Uh, we love you all. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it.